Hello friend, thanks for joining me for another book chat. Today let's spend a few minutes with The Dane Curse by Dashiell Hammett. This book was originally published back in 1929. It was originally published serially from what I can tell uh, between 1928 and 1929 in Mask Magazine, but it was published in book form in 1929. The Dane Curse by Dashiell Hammett. This is the fourth book by Dashiell Hammett that I have read. I have previously read Red Harvest, The Maltese Falcon, The Glass Key, The Glass Key, and then this one, uh, The Dang Curse. There is one more novel, The Thin Man, and I do hope to get to that. Uh, sometime still this year maybe I'm still kind of hoping to get to that before the year is out and I will have completed all five novels then by Dashiell Hammett he did write quite a few short stories with this same main character the continental op here that's in this book I'll talk more about in a bit that were collected a few years ago and in book form and I might read that too at some point but anyway I do hope to get to Thin Man to the Thin Man yet this year. But that this one, The Dang Curse by Dashiell Hammond, it does feature the Continental Op as the main character and also our first person narrator. The Continental Op is never never uh, doesn't we don't know their name they're never named this continental op was also the narrator and main character of red harvest where we also never knew their name but in this book these he is a detective for an insurance company and in this book the story kicks off with a jewel theft from the leggett family edgar levitt leggett is a from what I can gather, kind of a scientist inventor and has a laboratory in his home. And he has had these, he had these um, diamonds that are kind of, you know, industrial grade diamonds. So they're not really jewel grade, but they were stolen and he made a, an insurance claim for it. So therefore, the Continental Op is sent in to investigate it. Mr. Edgar Levitt is married to his wife, Alice, and he has a daughter, Gabrielle, who we learn is kind of known as kind of a fast girl in the neighborhood. And this family uh, is right off the bat a little bit mysterious. You know, when the Continental Op goes to do the initial investigation, for one, he finds one of the diamonds right out in the front yard, right off the bat, right at the beginning of the book. But ultimately, he is drawn into a web of deceit and lies and schemes and uh, just all sorts of things. We end up having... Um, more than one murder and I should say here uh, stop here for a minute just to say I'm not going to give away anything that I think would detract from this detective story this is a hard-boiled detective story and so there are lots of twists and turns and I'm not going to give away anything that I think would detract from that experience for a first-time reader but nevertheless so we do we do see uh, there's a robbery like I said starting out at the very beginning there's more than one murder there's a kidnapping there is a morphine addiction. There is um, a wife who's two-timing her husband. There's a bombing at one point. There's a weird religious cult. Uh, the cult is called the Temple of the Holy Grail that meets in this really creepy building. You know, the housekeeper's got a sketchy boyfriend. On the other hand, we have the fiancé of one of the main characters. Is seems to be this super nice guy with a heart of gold. And, you know... In this book, most people, most of the characters actually aren't quite what they seem at the beginning, uh, during, you know, when we first, when we first meet them. But there's so many scams and things like that going on. We don't really know who's trustworthy and who's not. And that's sort of the, sort of the, I think, the crux of, of a hard-boiled detective like the Continental Op. There is a couple of other characters that I just think were kind of interesting. One is the um, the old man. The old man is was also in the Red Harvest novel, and he is the man who runs the Continental Op, 
the Continental, I guess, the Insurance Agency's Detective Bureau. And so he does all the assignments and things like that. They create, you know, divvies out the resources for who's going to follow this person, who's going to do that. So, you know, I think that's kind of interesting. And then the other, the other kind of interesting character, I think, in this particular book is a friend of the Continental Op who is a writer whose name is Owen. And he and, and the Continental Op will have these conversations. He's an observer of people. And so we get a lot of observations about the other characters through this writer who ultimately figures uh, very strongly in the story in general. So I mentioned about the, the uh, hard-boiled aspect of, of the Continental Op. You know, he is... He has been in this for many years at this point, and so he's been immersed into this world of deceit and lies. You know, if you're a detective for an insurance agency, you're going to come across people trying to run these different scams and things like that. So you get a little jaded to the world, right? And so he comes across as as sort of this hard-boiled, sort of this world-weary person, and we're going to talk more about that here in a bit. But the common theme, I think, running through this book is the Dane Curse itself. The title of the book, The Dane Curse, actually refers to a curse uh, on a family, the Dane family. So through the course of this book, we actually uncover who the Dane family are, some of their very, very sketchy past, and also what's going on with them currently. So the curse itself, though, is that anybody that's involved with, that's a member of the family or involved with the family is going to meet a violent end. So they're bad luck, basically. Mega bad luck. And that runs through that sort of theme of the Dane curse, who the Danes are, what they've done in the past, what they're doing in the present, who of them? Who among them are good? Who among them are bad? And and not only that, but who are they? Because one thing about this book is that there's also quite a few assumed names and different people who have, for one reason or another, assumed a different identity. So I mentioned about the Continental Op and being hard boiled, but the Continental Op. Uh, there's a quote here that I think is really cool, and he's talking about having to having to think. So the Continental Op is always trying to figure everything out, right? Because he's our main detective. And so he's talking about here how to think and that why most people don't take the trouble to, t- to think things through because it's just a lot of work to do. And the quote says, Nobody thinks clearly, no matter what they pretend. Thinking is a dizzy business, a matter of catching as many of those foggy glimpses as you can and then fitting them together the best you can. That's why people hang on so tight to their beliefs and opinions, because compared to the haphazard way in which they are arrived at, even the goofiest opinion seem wonderfully clear, sane, and self-evident. And if you let it get away from you, then you have to dive back into that foggy muddle to wrangle yourself out another to take its place. He's saying here, people don't like to give up their, their whatever they've, whatever uh, conclusion they've come to, because if they, if they do, then they have to go back to the drawing board and do all that figuring, coming to a new conclusion again. And this is sort of like the confirmation bias where people want to believe, choose to believe those things which support what they already believe. Um, so I thought that was really kind of cool. So about the hard-boiled, I have a couple of quotes here about that. Uh, the Continental Op and his sort of life as this hard-boiled person who's seen this side of humanity, who constantly is exposed to this sort of side of humanity, which is not fun, right? There's a, there's a quote here uh, of how he's going about getting information. And one of the characters tells him, is, is kind of like disapproving of the methods of, of, of the Continental Op. The car, Continental Op having to be really tough with this character to try to get to the truth, to get beyond the lies and the deceptions to the truth. And the quote says, The doctor went out. Collinson chafing the unconscious girl's hands looked at me as if I were something there ought to be a law against and said, I hope you're satisfied by the way your work got done. It got done, I said. You know, he just wants to get to the truth, and sometimes that takes some rough sort of methods. And then there's another quote here from the Continental Op is, is 
talking to one of the characters and the character is he's trying to again again get to the correct to get to the true information but behind all the lies and the deceit that this other character has been throwing up as a smoke screen and the continental op says i said since we've gone this far it won't do any harm and it might do some good to talk i don't think anything will do any good now said the other character she set her hat straight you say you know then lies are worthless, and only lies would help, she shrugged. Well, what now? This character is kind of like, okay, I'm tired of lying, but, you know, lies aren't going to work right now. I just think that's so cool. Finally, there's a, there's a quote from the Continental Lob from this other character who's, you know, seeing in him this hard-boiled nature, and he's actually a human beneath it, right? He's got human feelings, but others don't necessarily see those. And this quote says... I believed you until you came in just now, and then I saw, she stopped. Saw what? A monster. A nice one, an especially nice one to have around when you're in trouble, but a monster just the same, without any human foolishness like love in him. And what's the matter? Have I said something I shouldn't? She can tell from the expression on the Continental Ops face that she's maybe said something that's kind of causing him to react right because i think that at heart that car the heart the continental op doesn't want to have to live in this kind of sordid world that he lives in but that's the world he does live in and yet uh so he has this hard shell that others see in her and how she framed it a monster a nice monster to have when you need them but still a monster i thought that was really interesting I think I'll stop the chat there. The Dane Curse was just a lot of fun to read. I enjoyed it immensely. I like all have liked all of Dashiell Hammett's books, um, and I do hope to get to the Thin Man here, uh, not before the before the year's out. So stay tuned for that. However, my next chat is going to be some nonfiction, a history of the third volume of a history of the Third Reich. This volume called the Third Reich at War by Richard J. Evans, and I have finished this already, and I will have a chat on it coming up soon. So until next time, take care.